Our ability to test now for fetal genetic abnormalities has really exploded in the past several years. What used to happen is that women who were under 35 were basically told, you're low risk, there's nothing wrong with you, you're fine. And people who were exactly 35 and over were all scared to death and said, everything is really horrible and you need to do invasive procedures to find out if your baby has a genetic abnormality. But nowadays with the advent of screening, actually that's not true. What we can do now are non-invasive screens, which are basically a series of blood tests and an ultrasound that are all complete by the end of the first trimester. And this can be done in all women of all ages and basically give the woman a very precise estimate of what is her risk of having a baby with a genetic abnormality, specifically Down syndrome, trisomy 18, and trisomy 13. And based on those numbers, she can make a better informed decision about whether she wants to do what we call an invasive test or a diagnostic test, which is not a screening test, but basically it gives you a yes or no answer. Those invasive options are called a CVS, which stands for chorionic villus sampling, or an amniocentesis. Conceptually, a CVS and an amniocentesis are the same kind of test. They're both invasive in that a needle has to go into the mother, and they both give you cells from the baby, or in the case of the CVS, the placenta, and we test those directly to check the genetics of the baby. They're called invasive because it goes into the mother's body, and they're called diagnostic because they actually give you a yes or no answer. The difference between them is mainly procedural. The CVS is done earlier in pregnancy, typically around 11 or 12 weeks, and an amniocentesis is done slightly later, typically around 16 to 18 weeks. In the CVS, we guide the needle into the placenta, and in the amniocentesis, we guide the needle into the uterus, into the fluid around the baby. In neither test does the needle actually go into the baby uh, itself. Both of these give us diagnostic results. People used to think that CVS had a much higher risk than amniocentesis in regards to pregnancy loss, but much of the newer data, in fact all of the newer data, shows that that's not the case. That the risk for both of them is very, very low, both well under 1%, and seems to be about the same. So nowadays the reason people would choose one over the other is either in terms of when they'd like to do the test, why are they doing the test, is it something that was picked up maybe earlier in pregnancy, in which case they'll choose a CVS, or maybe something that was picked up later in pregnancy, and so they're out of the window for CVS and would choose an amniocentesis, or sometimes their doctors only perform one test versus the other. Here at Maternal Fetal Medicine Associates and at Carnegie Imaging for Women, we perform both procedures. We offer both procedures to women, uh, and we believe that they're both safe and reasonable procedures for women to choose if either they find out on their non-invasive screening that they're high risk, or if they just choose diagnostic testing over screening tests, which is completely reasonable. One of the advantages to doing a diagnostic or an invasive test like a CVS or amniocentesis over a screening test is you can test for more conditions. So a, a screening test will look for three or four or five genetic conditions, but an amniocentesis or CVS can check for over 100 conditions um, in the baby.